All right, let's talk about the three stages of a proxy, at least to me, the three beginning stages. Now, the first stage is you want to establish communication. So this is anywhere from ages two to ages six. I mean, there's no limit. You're going to get down on the floor, whether you have 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour every day, you're going to get down on the floor and play with their playing. And you're going to just play, but kind of notice. And anytime they get excited about something or something happens, you're going to narrate like, oh, wow. And when they get excited, try and encourage just any sounds or any, any external feedback they're giving you. Do you know what I mean? Like this is step one where you're trying to get just some feedback from them. Um, just any little sounds or anything and then play on those. Oh, you like that. So you're kind of a sportscaster. That's one of the things you got to get used to with the Praxia is other kids you can ask them like, hey, what color is this? How many is this? But with the Praxia kits, you're gonna, you're gonna narrate. That's pink. Oh, pink, blue, um, oh, water, you're thirsty. So you're really gonna narrate. And one of the first signs you can teach your kids is more too, because they're eating. When they're eating more, that way that will just take away a lot of frustration. And as far as narration goes, um, one of the things to narrate that's really important, I think, is their emotion, their emotional state. You're mad. You're mad about that. You're frustrated. Oh, I can see you're sad. Because then they know that they've been heard and it really does help to calm them down a little bit because someone hears them. They're not alone, you hear them. Um, so they're speaking without words, essentially, you know, emotions that they have. So the next phase would be any bilabel sounds, which is with your lips. So the easiest sounds to make like ma, pa, ba, um, any sounds using your lips. So I'll put the, the letters on the ground, but it, um, yeah, the letters on the screen. But as far as narration goes as well, for that, oh, you want a cookie, can I hear, can I hear ba? What does a sheep make? Can you tell me ba? And I'll give you this cookie, the cookie's up here, ba. It doesn't have to be a cookie, it can be fruit or anything like that. But anything your child wants, you just wait till your child, you know, indicate something. That's, a, that's another thing too, especially with apraxic children, what we do as moms is, and dads and parents is, we anticipate their needs, right? That's like a huge thing is we anticipate their needs. They're hungry, they're thirsty. So that it makes them extra anxious when they're not with us because they don't have the language to tell other people, hey, I need that. So trying to get them to indicate whether it's through pictures or pointing or just any type, again, getting that, just that feedback from them is kind of important. And I know I was guilty of that, of anticipating uh, my apraxic child's needs all the time um, and saying, oh, he's thirsty, I can tell. But giving him the sign for more is one step um, to really, just to help him be a little more independent. And teaching them small words like hi, bye, um, bubba, maybe, you know, for bottle or for drink, you know, and, and things like that. Because Kaufman, what Kaufman does, that's, that's step three, is kind of we're taking the bilabel sounds like that we spoke about and we're sort of building on that. And that's what Kaufman does is they establish communication and they build on those and you don't need the Kaufman system in order to do this any speech language pathologist and just working with your child I mean they all kind of follow the same the same format a, a little bit differently but they all follow the same format we're gonna start slow and we're gonna build on that so ba will become up and then you can add an a in there um, to, to some to some things just to add just to try and build sentences when they get a bit older now I do have videos on reading and on math to help your kids whether they're in school or they're homeschooled if you want to assist them on that because one of the things too is for math is for motor planning so it's like motor planning and big so in your so <laughs> getting your mouth to work is kind of the same things that with handwriting so for math what we do is you do tally marks or you do dots to indicate the number. That way we can progress in their knowledge because they know what's going on. They're just not able to necessarily communicate it. And I find being clear with your child too, saying, you know, I know you're frustrated and I'm frustrated because I really want to understand you. So let's try a different way. Because you can use a distraction to get them over upset when they're really little, but when they start to get older, you know, four and five years, I found it just easier to be, you know, just to be honest about it. So hopefully that helps. And uh, I'm gonna do a little series on apraxia to see if any of this information is helpful with you.
and you say please like and subscribe. Please like you like. And hit the bell for notifications. Hit the bell for notifications. <laughs> <laughs>